so here we are early February and um, good day to you all. Before I made this video I was thinking about whether it's useful to even talk about this and I decided that it may make it useful by encouraging myself and others to simply ask questions. So I invite you to pause the video at the points where I ask questions and uh, perhaps close your eyes, meditate on them for a bit and then once you've done that you might want to look up on the internet um, do some searching. Uh, by the way, I've been recommended gbiru.com um, as a search engine um, in preference to Google by Sam Williams, who is under the name of Sam Williamism on his YouTube channel. Check him out. For those of you who don't live in the UK or are smart enough to realise that the so-called news may be a form of propaganda and therefore avoided, I wanted to discuss the story of Chris Hume, which is all over the British press. He is firstly a flesh and blood human like the rest of us and he happens to be a member of the UK Parliament. Ten years ago he was caught by a speed camera and he got his wife to take the points so that he wouldn't be banned or so that his insurance wouldn't go up. I, I don't know the exact details of why he did it. Which brings me on to the subject of crime. What is crime? I'm going to pause after each of these questions so that you can turn it off and have a think about it for yourself. Is it a crime to deceive? Under what circumstances can there be a crime without a victim in your mind, according to your definition? What I see going on here with this story is some very clever and devious goings on, which could be conscious or unconscious. What he is admitted to is perverting the course of justice. So my question to you is, what do those words mean, perverting, coarse and justice? And what does the whole phrase mean? And does it mean something different in court? What do they understand it to mean, those who are members of the Law Society? Do we have justice, now that you've thought about what it actually is? Is it not already completely perverted? Do the super-rich have any influence on how law is practised? Is the system set against those with less money and power? Who set up the system in the first place and why? Is telling a lie about who is driving a speeding car a crime or is it something more to do with money and business? Do speed cameras work at reducing our speeds or do they primarily create revenue? Who benefits from the revenue they create? Which flesh and blood human beings benefit? I don't want to ruin good questions with poor answers, but I will share with you an answer or two that popped into my head, albeit under the influence of various other people over the course of my life. To me, a lot of this is about the use and abuse and manipulation of language. To me, crime is a word. It is a word like all words which seem ambiguous. But to me, whatever you call it, my desire is to live with others in a way that we respect each other's property and bodies by not stealing their property using force or deception and we respect each other's bodies by not hurting them or even worse, killing others. So to me, that word points towards an act which is perpetuated against the flesh and blood human either towards his body or his property. Therefore, there must, of course, be a victim. According to this definition, Chris Hume's act of saying his wife drove the car is not a crime. There is no victim. However, could it be that Chris Hume has been to some extent complicit in some very serious crimes, according to the definition, well, or understanding, shall we say, of the word that I've just articulated? You see, this big story seems to me to be continuing the drip-feeding of conditioning us to believe that A, crimes do not need a victim, B, that there is a course of justice which is not perverse, C, that the system itself is not endemically perverse and deceitful, D, that the system is not protecting deceitful practices by corporations and people in governments, and E, that the other MPs are not involved in serious crime on a daily basis, either knowingly or unconsciously. Well, here are some more questions for you. 
What is extortion? Could taxation be a form of extortion, whose ends do not justify the means? Would you willingly pay full taxation if it was voluntary? Is it voluntary? How do you know? Could it be that Chris Hume and his colleagues are responsible for extorting money from millions of flesh and blood UK residents like you and me, many of whom live in conditions he would not tolerate? I'm not talking about myself. And then he and his colleagues take the said money, give it to their friends who work in the banks and major corporations by privatising everything, and worse than that, spend billions on tanks, fighter jets, missiles, drones, guns, and wages for young men, send them to countries far away, under, shall we say, questionable grounds, and thousands of men, men, women and children are killed as a result. And this man faces jail for lying about who is driving a car. So isn't it clever how the press portray this as if it's such a great restoration of public trust in the justice system? And everybody says, yeah, let's get him, this dishonest MP, he's deceitful, as if we're not all deceitful. When really what it does to us subconsciously is to scare the crap out of us because we've all been deceitful. It's part of being human. Personally, I do my very best to avoid physically hurting other people's bodies or property. Although I realise that by buying many of the things I buy, I am benefiting from some form of abuse. And I do not think it is immoral to lie about who is driving a car that got flashed by some money-making speed camera. I hope that that's okay to say on YouTube. It's a belief. So we all have done deceitful things, and this story is saying, we, the establishment, can go back as long as we like, 10 years or more, and get you. We can look at your texts and your emails, and you could be put in jail. Put in jail for deceit. Hmm, I thought jails were there to keep dangerous people away from the public. And if deceitful people are dangerous, well, perhaps we should all be locked up and the politicians in a high-security prison for a very long time.